Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So I'm going to go through a number of symbol requests that came through, but I do want to start with the lesson and I'm going to go back to my old friend ADXDI. I'm going to focus a little bit more on the DI side of things this week. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, lesson and the, the agenda. So um, it's essentially my favorite trading play, now trading pattern, I should say. And what it does is it offers a couple different things. It gives us the ability to see the potential for a new trend uh, developing. Uh, it can offer a trading signal as well. Um, and it, it can also give us a really good idea of who's in command. So we always want to start with price first and then use the DI lines to confirm. And that's true of any indicator that you'd ever use. Um, there are two specific things that I'm looking for in, in DI for this signal. And one takes control and until the other side can do these two specific things, the, the, that side stays in command. All right. And then once we're done with that, we're going to go through the uh, specific uh, uh, st uh, stock requests that came through. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson to start. OK, so I'm going to use a 60 minute Adobe chart for this example. And uh, I've, what I've done is I've taken the MACD out and I'm just looking at the ADX with the DI lines. OK, now it, both have importance to me. But what I'm going to discuss today, I'm focusing more on the DI lines for this specific trading signal. And if you learn this pattern or this, uh, this specific setup, I think what it can do is offer you the ability to see the beginning of a new trend. Now, how good that trend is is going to depend on all the other stuff we talk about in all these lessons. How, what the ADX is set up. Is it a low ADX breakout? Is it a really strong ADX where you're getting a pullback and now you're starting a new trend? Um, a lot of this is covered in my course, but what I want to make sure um, you get on this one is just from a trading standpoint, just like I do with MACD and I give these, there's short term signals with MACD when they don't have ADX confirmation. We can do the same thing with the DI lines without ADX confirmation. Uh, confirmation. And uh, so we're going to start on the left and we get this little breakout pattern. Now always start with price and then use the ADX and the DI to confirm. Don't go the other way around. All right. Now, one thing that you can do is look for a specific pattern, and that is when the green DI breaks out and pulls back and it holds above the red and it holds above the 25 line. All right. Sounds simple. Now, what I want to see on price is it needs to have it needs to be trending at that point. Like it needs to either have it. Most of the time, it's the start of a new breakout. A pattern and you're getting a pullback and that's what this is telling us and that's the beginning of a new move to the upside all right now a lot of times it didn't happen here this was more of a climatic peak you can see how this got way way overdone to the upside as opposed to showing momentum exhaustion where there was divergence but a lot of times what you'll see is the move starts with a move where green di um, will uh, break out and it'll break out even above its prior greens in a lot of cases, pull back, hold above red, hold above 25, and that'll be the kickoff move to get things going. And in many cases, the red will be going in the opposite direction, all right? And the moment this comes up through this prior peak, we know we're probably at some kind of an ending of this expansion phase to the upside. So I'm essentially talking about the beginning of an expansion phase. But if you notice what, what took place, green basically stayed above after that signal, Red kind of poked up, came back down, poked up, came back down. And then look at what happened here. Red shows up and it gives a higher low above green and above 25. And that is the beginning of the decline. Now, if you notice, if you took this trade here and you put a stop right, right above it, you would have been stopped out. All right. So I'm not necessarily telling you that that's how you can trade this. But what it does tell me is the beginning of an expansion phase for red, which is what took place. Now, in this case, when we made our low, notice how the DI diverged. That's typical. That is what you should be on the lookout for. If you get this DI divergence, then you know we're getting ready to probably switch. And look at what happens here. We get a higher pivot low. So this is a higher low right here in price after breaking the downtrend line and getting back above the 18. 
And green DI confirms by pulling back and making higher low above the 25 level. Yes, it did drop down after that, but it stayed above the red. And if you notice, price did not make a lower low in price. So this was actually a reverse divergence with, with DI, the way that played out. All right, and then look at what happened. Look at how green stayed in control, in command until here. Now, we don't actually, so if you start to look at the red and you see what's going on, you're like, huh, red's starting to show up here, but this is actually still in an uptrend. What is that telling us about what's going on here? It's giving us a massively early warning sign that the ADX and the green DI are losing massive strength, okay? Now, if you notice, the red DI made a higher low here, and if we look at where that took place, it was actually a price hitting a new high. All right. So this is a divergent signal. This is this is not what we're talking about here, like this specific pattern, which did take place later. But we always want to be on the lookout for this, if especially after an, a, a, a significant extended run to the upside. Be on the lookout for strong ADX, strong ADX, strong ADX, strong ADX, and then non-existent ADX at a peak. All right, well, we should be on the lookout for a reversal. Now, again, we do see that reversal signal and trading signal here. Um, most of the time when I'm going to use this as a trading pattern, I'm going to use the 18 or the 40 as my stop point and try and get in for um, you know a little bit more of an extended run rather than looking at it as just one leg to the downside. I kind of want to look at it like, okay, red is taking over for now. Let's see how long it wants to take over. And I think if you have this mentality and you think about the trades this way, or at least the market this way, you can use this for analysis in addition to trading. All right. We can see turning point. We can see turning point. We see another turning point here. And then we get a final turning point here. Now, this is different in my view because this was giving us an early warning sign that we, we don't have to really wait for this, all right? We could have been looking for something down on even a, a, or a trend line break or something like that as an early sign that there's a problem. There's this problem developing with, uh, with the ADX this way. Now, again, I'm doing this off the hourly because I wanted to show multiple signals here. Um, it, without having to squish the chart or go back a whole lot. Um, so uh, hopefully this helps. I would go through and look at some stocks, see if you don't see these signals, especially where you're starting. If you go back and look, you'll see a lot of um, false signals where you, you, you make a move up and it looks like it wants to make a move to the upside, but instead of doing that, it actually turns down below or breaks back above uh, below the, um, the red DI. And that's going to be caused by sloppy action here or deep pullbacks here. So just be on the lookout. We're looking for essentially buyers taking control, sellers taking control, buyers taking control, uh, sellers starting to show signs of life, and then they finally take control here. So um, we want to use this to our advantage, and I think it can really help, especially when you're looking to get in early in a reversal of a trend. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. Now, my research can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. Um, if you're interested in learning more about MACD and ADX in multiple timeframes, I would suggest just starting with the book um, I'm offering at a discount right now. Now, the course is on there as well on the website. Um, what I would tell you is that I am adding a third course to the bundle uh, that's that's shown in the price um, on the website. And uh, it probably is going to change after I get the third course done in the first quarter of next year. So just kind of make you aware uh, early on. All right, let's go ahead and get going with the symbols now. Okay, I'm going to start out with the uh, QQQ, um, go to the IWM, and then actually look at a, uh, a slightly different way to look at bonds. Uh, and then start going through some uh, different symbol requests. I like to start out with a few indexes just to give us a kind of a feel for where we are. Um, I do the S&P on my YouTube channel on Friday morning. So if you're interested in an in-depth look at that and the market conditions, check that out. Um, so let's just kind of keep with what we've been talking about here. The l Last week, we got the... the uh, weekly RSI 5 had been over, really over the last few weeks had gotten a little overbought and we've been thinking that we want some type of a pause or a pullback 
But just based on the strength of the overall market move and the fact that um, uh, the ADX was strong on the daily chart, um, I've been thinking more in terms of an hourly that wants to go kind of sideways rather than down. All right. Now, one thing that I want to mention here that I think would alter my thinking in this is um, let's look at the daily chart because you notice we've got, first of all, in the weekly, you see how we've got some space between where price is and where the 18 is. Price is at 387. Um, the 18 week is around, let's call it 370. Um, so there's a little bit of an air pocket in there we have to kind of uh, be aware of. And we've got a situation on the daily where um, we made a new high here uh, in price and the DI did not confirm. And then we got to move to the downside and red DI made a move to the upside. Now I want to point this out. You see this little hitch here? This doesn't matter because there's no price correlation pivot in, involved. This is just one, you think about this as one swing to the upside right there, just like what price did, uh, I'm sorry, just like what price did to the downside here. All right. Now we've made a move up and this has moved down. If this were to come back down through here and red DI were to make a move back up through here, that would be a lot more significant to me. And I think it would increase the likelihood that we are heading down to fill in this little air pocket on the weekly. Now, the way it could play out is it's uh, the 7th of December. We could have ourselves a, take a little bit of heat here in the short term and then come back up and finish up near the highs of the year. That would still fit the description of the type of year that we've had where we open the year near the low and finish the year near the high. Just doesn't mean we've made any more upside progress. And that could very well be the case because we have a lot of stocks that are a little overbought right now. So just keep that in mind. We could just be going through some type of a consolidation pattern. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a huge down leg right now. I think if we're going to push down, it's probably going to it's probably going to happen into the new year as opposed to right now. It just seems like there's not that much time left in the year. It seems more likely, um, especially with the lack of distribution that I'm seeing, that it's more likely that we get another push or uh, consolidate, finish near the highs, push into new year, and then maybe we start to see some selling. All right, let's go to the IWM because again, this is this is really critical. So the the spider and the QQQ helps us with the here and the now, how strong things are. I think this uh, IWM gives us a much better sense of the potential of this move. So if we're going to go to the upside, we're going to need to see this black line continue to go up. And, and right now, it's running into some rest, resistance. It did get a rally off of support and. Also, it did get up through the 18 and the 40 week, which I mentioned last week. Um, what we we need, though, is a continuation here. And I would actually like to see this get overbought. It didn't make it to overbought. I mean, a sign, it would be a sign of strength if this could get to overbought. I, I would feel like there might be some more upside continuation, but we weren't able to do that, on at least not on the initial run. So um, with that said, uh, we've sh we're showing some small signs of life on a relative basis, uh, starting to tick up a little bit. But we're going to need to see more confirmation. And the move from here to 200, if it's going to get there, is going to need to really turn this relative strength through its moving average if we're going to do something more meaningful to the upside. If we're not, and then this doesn't improve, then my thinking is, is that, yeah, we have an upward bias into the end of the year, probably into the new year. And then I think we need to be on the lookout for a reversal in the general market if this doesn't improve. So that's kind of where I am right now. Um, but I take every new data point into uh, account. That's every single day, kind of looking at everything that's going on. All right, let's look at this 20-year uh, treasury three times bull, all right, on the uh, TMF. Now, um, it, we, I like to start with the bigger picture, obviously, and this is pretty blatant in the way that this diverged off the low. All right. Now, it's not quite as as um, blatant when you look at the uh, DI, the red DI, but it did diverge. It was a divergence. Um, but this clearly shows and this held the uh, signal line. Um, at, so I call this a in my course, I call this a divergent pinch play. So uh, that's essentially what's taking place here now. That could just be a trading play back up to the 18-month line. But look at the volume pattern here on the weekly. I mean, this is massive, massive volume, and we're back above the 18. 
So uh, wouldn't be surprised to see this maybe work its way back up. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make it to 70, but yeah, probably probably you know mid mid to high 60s is a potential here. Just based on the volume pattern, it would be hard to expect anything less. Um, but watch what this does as this gets closer to uh, the zero line because we're going to have some kind of a um, most likely we're going to have some kind of a reverse divergence developing. So I'm more inclined to believe this is a rally as opposed to a big, huge trend change right now. But, um, you know, we, we got to keep our uh, keep our eyes on this um, right now. The move to the upside here is not that great a momentum. It's not as good on the buy side as it was on the sell side. Now, you could argue that this was a climax pattern, but um, and, and maybe it was. And if that's the case, then we don't necessarily need this to be higher than that because it, it really won't be if this is a climax. Um, but, you know, just looking at it, I, I'm sort of expecting some kind of a, a check back or consolidation. And then we're going to have to see if it holds the 18 week on any kind of a pullback. And then, I th then it, if it does that, then I think there, it could get some legs, all right? Um, I'm actually thinking that uh, this cross of the 18 is, um, the fact that it did it so simply and easily um, is probably a pretty bullish sign for, um, for the bonds here. Uh, okay, let's start with NVIDIA. I get a lot of questions about NVIDIA on a regular basis, and um, I, I want to just point this out. I think... Uh, the 400 mark has been very important, right? This is where it came out with its earnings news, starting with the AI information that would kind of altered the way the stock traded. I mean, this is where it just had just a massive, massive move. We've held that level on pullback, subsequent pullback. So I like the way this is digesting here, all right? I mean, this is more of a sideways consolidation after getting extremely overbought. Look at how overbought this got. So that's good. Now, if we look at this from a trading standpoint, I did want to point something out. Last week, I talked about bottoming tails, topping tails as being one of my uh, favorite patterns. Look at where this developed. You see how this was an undercut pattern and then we get the bottoming tail. So that's pretty significant, especially when it happens at this big number, this 400 number. So when you see that, you take out the high of that, you got to have some respect for the move to the upside. Now, look at what happens. We go and we actually take out this prior peak, and then we get a uh, doji bar, indecision bar, then we get the kind of more fierce selling to the downside. So we get a failure pattern up here after a failure pattern down here. It's basically caught in a range. You got to be watching these and very careful when a stock is trading this way uh, to not be buying breakouts, especially when they're overbought. Um, so right now, I'm kind of thinking it wants to stay contained between 400 and 500 at this point. Obviously, if we take out one or the other, uh, that would probably lead to some kind of a trading move. Um, I think this has a long-term bullish bias, but it could fill in a little bit if it breaks 400. Okay, let's look at coin. So um, got really extended here. Uh, a very strong move. So we'll just start with the uh, weekly chart. We've been basing, working sideways, showed some strength to the upside, came back and kind of held the 40, while green DI maintained strength and the MACD held above the zero line, right? And then we turned up and we've had a good five or six weeks to the upside. We're actually getting a little short-term overdone here, and you can really see it on the daily chart. I mean, this has made such a big move in a short period of time. We ought to take a bit of a breather, but there's strength in this. So we could go through a pretty decent little correction to work this off, but you have to assume based on the strength, there's probably more upside coming. Now, at a minimum, I would say we're going to come back and test that high. But the likelihood is, just based on the strength, that if it consolidates the right way, you're probably looking at another leg to the upside to come. It's just not a good entry. It's more of a time to take profits if you're a trader than it is to be a buyer, I think. Um, now, it could end up doing some kind of a blow-off move from here and not correcting and going straight up. And then that, would, to me, would lead to some kind of a climatic ending. Okay, let's look at Wells Fargo. I think this is pretty interesting uh, because when you go through and look at the banks, for the most part, they haven't looked all that good. But um, there's some signs of life finally developing some of these. And um, I really like the fact that you had this big decline uh, in the bear market in 2020, a move up, and then the move down in 2022 is essentially a, a, a it's a spike in ledge on a monthly chart. You see that? I mean, this is just a big um, ledge formation forming. 
And I think you've got a zero line reversal developing. You don't have a lot of strength in the sellers. I think this is something we should be respecting. Now, what I'd be looking for is you see how we've got momentum starting here. We have no momentum here, ADX low, ADX low. And now we're getting momentum on this time frame. That is a very good sign if we're starting to the upside. Now, what should happen is maybe this ADX carries this up to this prior high. We get some kind of a pullback and a higher low. During that process, I'd like to see at least green kicking in and giving that signal that I'm talking about. Green holds 25 on a pullback and holds red. If we get that on this time frame on the weekly, then I would start to think that we're going to be breaking out of this base. Could be a very useful um, thing to be on the lookout for. Okay, CVNA. Um, when this was asked, it was a it was before the earnings, I believe. Um, but it's trying. I mean, it's holding the 18 month line. Uh, we've got some resistance at the 18 weeks. So there really wasn't much of a trade here because it got down. This was kind of rolling. I mean, maybe you could have looked at this as an oversold. Um, uh, it was an RSI signal this starting to roll over. And so when I see this starting to roll over, the RSI signal still holds. But what ends up happening is you come down and you make one more higher low. So this might come back down and test a little bit. Overall, it's not bad, but I would view it more as a trading play off the weekly uh, rather than the monthly. It's not a big base there. Um, I think it's going to take more time to really get this going in a big, meaningful way. Um, all right. I do want to talk about this very quickly. The question was asked about this as a trading play, especially with the narrow range bars here. And so entry was on this move to the upside. Let me just pull it up with the hourly up. So the hourly here was the signal coming up through here. And the person said they got stopped out. And here's here's what I would tell you is I don't I wouldn't take this trade myself. And I'm going to explain why. Um, this is a trade out of my uh, one of my courses. It's a, a narrow range, uh, tight trading. Way. It's a compression play swing trade, right? Um, but like this is the one. This NR7 bar here to me makes more sense. We have a rising ADX, and I know we had a rising ADX here. But you see how much further away you were from support, whereas this had just basically broken out. We're still tight enough. So I don't mind being far away if we're tight to price support. But if you look at this one, we were far away with strong ADX, but we're really far away from any price support. This has this big air pocket. You see what I mean? So I don't really want to do this trade. This one intrigues me a little bit more. Hopefully you see the difference there. And then the gap up. You got to look at the price gap up and realize that if your stop is going underneath here, you're really not buying a narrow range play. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I did want to cover that in terms of Intel. I think, uh, whoops, I think uh, there's some pretty decent resistance uh, that we're running into right now. That's the other thing that I didn't like about this. I have been telling my institutional clients that I just think there's just too much resistance here in the mid forties and that this would struggle at that level. So um you know, you got to look at those bigger time frames, even if you're going to trade shorter term. All right. EW is um, it's getting a rally, but I don't see anything trend changing. The ADX is strong. MACD could get a little bounce here, but we need more to develop to get more interested in this. It's, it needs more time. I, it could very well be making a low right now, but it's way too early to make any kind of a, um, decision on this right now in terms of a real turn. All right. Let's look at... Um, EXR. So I do like the dynamics of this. And what I mean by that is we get this move to the downside with some pretty big volume, almost looks climatic. Um, we had strong ADX to the upside. Now I'm on a monthly chart and then we get a move to the downside and we don't really have a lot of strength in the decline. The other thing that intrigues me about this is we've come down to a big round number and we're back to this really key support level. So based on that, I mean, I think we're making a very important low. So you want to take that into account. Now, I don't know that there's actually a trade here yet because we're running into resistance um, and we're probably going to have to back and fill a little bit. I'd, I'd say at a minimum, we got to see this come back to the 18 and then maybe you could play this as a daily hourly just for a trade back up to resistance at 150 or something like that. If you're going to play it longer term, I really think you're going to need more time uh, to let this play out. Um, and then we've got this AMD. Now it's starting to pull back. We've got, it's operating off of a pinch play um, on the monthly chart after a long three to four month pullback to the key moving averages on the monthly. 
And then we're starting up here. So now what I'd like to actually see is a second pinch play on the weekly. And I think if we get that and we get a trigger, I think I could I would consider that just based on the fact that the 18 week is now rising and the 18 month is now rising. It's the first time since uh, 2021. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, if you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how I do this analysis in MACD and ADX, I would suggest uh, going to my YouTube channel. I talk about those two indicators a lot on there. Um, have a, a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.